Etsy is one of the world's leading platforms for selling both physical goods and also digital goods. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Check this one out. This is a digital download. When it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. This is a cut file. It's an SVG, DXF, EPS, PNG bundle. You can add it to the basket. It's $4. This person's made 120 sales so far. Here's one. This is a custom listing. And this person's got 54,000 sales. And they've got a whole section down here and they've got 77 SVG files. And you can see here, this person's got them all listed. They're, you know, relatively good price point and they're instant shipping because if I click on this one and let's say I want to buy it, I can add to the basket. And once I pay for it, I instantly get it. It's just a zip file. So how do you make files like this? That's what I'm going to be talking about in some pretty deep dive detail in this video. I'm going to cover how to make these using completely free software and then how to actually list it on Etsy. So if you're interested in learning about the mechanics of this, then this video is for you. All right, welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a great day. It can be intimidating to go onto Etsy and see huge stores that are selling hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of digital goods. And you're like, where do I even start? So in this video, I'm gonna cover exactly how to make the files, how to bundle them, and then how to get them listed on Etsy. So let's start. Why are people buying digital files? Well, there's typically four or five types of digital files that people buy. And the most popular one is called an SVG file. That stands for scalable vector graphic. The reason that this is a good file is because it does not get pixelated when it gets really large. So they're good for stencils on walls. People use them for really large posters. An SVG file has an infinite level of crispness when you're, you know, when you download that file and you use it in an application like a Photoshop or an Inkscape. The second type of file is a PNG file. These are really good for if you're making like t-shirts or coffee mugs or some sort of print on demand item. And the reason a PNG file works is because a PNG file has a transparent background. So you can throw that design onto a t-shirt and then whatever color the t-shirt is, it's just the text or just the image that will be on the t-shirt. You won't have a white background unless you choose to have that. The third type of file is a DXF file and that's like a cutting file. So there's two ones that I've run into, I'm sure there's more reasons, but a DXX, DXF file is typically used if you have a cut machine. And a cut machine is like a high-end cutting machine. So you can cut like really intricate patterns into paper. Or other materials. The other reason that I've seen DXF files used is for woodworking machines and like laser cutting. And so it's really cool. Now, all of this would be the same design, mind you. You would just have it in different formats. So you might have like a flower as an SVG and a flower as a PNG and a flower as a DXF. The fourth one is an EPS file. And this is like an SVG file, but it can be used in Photoshop. So it's like a, uh, it's like a vector in the sense that it's, it's like a, I think of it as like a hybrid between a PNG file and an SVG file. It looks like a PNG, but it acts like an SVG. So an EPS file is really useful if you're in Photoshop and you're using it for, uh, you know, really high resolution photos. And then the last one is the good old JPEG file. And the JPEG file is just sort of the most robust file type. And so people can use that for anything they want if they want to make a poster or a print. So when you're bundling digital files for sale on Etsy, you'd want to at least include these four, SVG, PNG, DXF, and EPS. You may want to also include the JPEG if you want, um, but you don't have to because people can just use the PNG, but it's your choice. Here's an example of what you can list on Etsy. So this is just a made up example. 
and this says 30 SVG, PNG, DXF, and EPS. And the theme here is summer beach. And these are silhouettes that are simple. So you could use them in a Cree cut or you could use them on a t-shirt. The, the, you know, there's tons of options for using these files. This is just going on because I've got 30 here listed. So here's an umbrella, sunglasses, a fan. And so somebody would purchase this and then they could use them one of those file types. So they would download all 30 files, meaning that you would have 30 SVGs in the bundle, 30 PNGs, 30 DXFs, and 30 EPSs. So this one bundle would be about 120 files, and then they would download a zip file or two zip files, maybe even four zip files here of 30 each, and then they would use whatever file type they need to use. So the big question becomes, how do you actually make these digital files? Where do you get the images? What programs do you use? How, what are the different paths to success? So that's what I'm gonna cover right now. The first thing when you're making a digital file is you could, in theory, just draw the actual picture. So let's say, for example, you're a relatively good artist. You could sit down at a table and you could physically draw 30 arrows or 30 stars, 30 handmade hearts. You could draw, uh, you know, aces and diamonds and clubs and hearts, like, you know, suits of cards. You can just physically draw them, take a picture of those drawings, you know, basically you're scanning them into digital format, and then you use something like Inkscape, which is a free vector tool, to render them into SVGs and the other types of files. That's one option. You can also draw them digitally as well, and I'll go through an example of how to do that right in Inkscape. The second way you can make digital files is to trace the images. And so you could basically pull public domain pictures and then use Inkscape, for example, a vector software, free vector software, and you can just trace the image and just create an SVG file and the other file types off of that as well. I'll go through an example of that too. The third one is to modify existing images. So you might have a free SVG public domain file, and then you may want to modify it, remove some elements, add some elements. So you're basically combining different pieces of art together to make your own t-shirt graphic, for example. And I'll go through an example of that. So let's start off with the first one, which is drawing images. Now I'm going to go to Inkscape, and we'll get started on actually drawing our own SVG file. Okay, so if you're wondering what is this Inkscape this guy keeps talking about, the answer is go to inkscape.org and check out this free software. It's completely free and you can just click the little download button over in the bottom left and you can see how easy it is to install and use. Now I'm going to be using Inkscape in this. It's completely free. So if you're worried about buying some high-end software in order to create these SVG files, do not worry about that. I'm going to open up Inkscape now and we'll get started drawing an SVG file. I remember the first time I ever opened up Inkscape and I just went, whoa, it's a little intimidating. There's a whole bunch of menu items along the left-hand side. There's a menu along the top. There's menu items along the right-hand side. And then there's this color palette down at the bottom that just goes on forever and ever and ever. So it's like, where's the instructions on how to use this, right? So don't worry. It's not that difficult, especially if we're just going to create simple SVG files. And that's really what we're doing. We're not creating some complicated four-hour piece of artwork here. This is just nice and easy. So what we're going to do is start over on the left-hand side. And any menu item that I hover over, a little description box pops up. So you can see here over the circle, it says create circles, ellipses, and arcs. And as I just go on down, I can see there's different items here. This one says create spirals. There's a pen tool here, a pencil tool, a calligraphy pen, and so on and so on. So we're just gonna get started really easily. I'm just gonna click this little circle and it says create circles, ellipses, and arcs. I'm just gonna click that. Now down at the bottom, there's your color palette. So if I wanted to create a black circle, I'll just click the little black, which is in the left-hand side, and then I'll just drag my mouse, and that's my circle that I create. That's it, that's all there is to it. Now that's my circle that's created. I can select it on the top left, and I can stretch it if I want. 
I can make it larger or smaller. I can do all sorts of weird and wild stuff to it. Now this is an actual SVG file. So we've already created one. When I click the second little arrow down, it says edit paths by node. And when I click on that, you'll see there's four little paths that come up, actually only three that come up. And because a circle is so simplistic, I can actually edit these paths. I can actually go in and I can change how they interact. And we're going to get into more into that about moving around these little, little nodes because you can edit items by node. There's also a calligraphy pen, for example, just for example, I'm just picking stuff here at random. This calligraphy pen, you can draw a line and then that also becomes a vector. So now I can zoom in. I'm just going to hold the control key down and just scroll up with my mouse wheel and I can scroll right in. I can actually edit these nodes so I can make them as weird and as wild as I want. So it's very easy and intuitive to use Inkscape and to create an SVG file, it's actually pretty easy. I can do the same thing here with this one. I can select it, I can stretch it, I can do all sorts of stuff to it. So if you wanna create a simple SVG file, it's pretty easy to do. So the first example I'm gonna cover is how to draw these SVGs. So I'm just gonna delete these two out and now let's draw, for example, an arrow. By the way, this page that's set up here in the middle, we don't really care about that. We're just gonna be using whatever white space we've got here. So what I'm gonna do is actually uh, select my calligraphy pen and I'm just gonna draw a line, just like that. And then I'm gonna draw another line like that and another line like that. And then I'll just draw an arrow like that. Now I'm just using my mouse to do it. But there you go. I drew an arrow. Now it's not that great, mind you, but there's a lot of demand on Etsy for hand-drawn items. So there's really two ways you could do this. You could just draw this with a piece of paper and a pencil, like in real life. Forget about the computer. Or you can draw it in the computer itself. If you have a touch screen, and a stylus, you can actually draw really nice hand-drawn images. So obviously I'm not doing that great here with the pen, but I can use a, a pencil, for example, and I could try that again. Let's say I wanna draw a rocket. I can draw a rocket design using a pen. And now I've got, you know, I'd have to clean it up, but I could basically use the pencil design as well. So you could draw like, you know, Circles, hearts is a really common one. Check marks. So there's a lot of really, really simple things you can do, right? And the idea here is that you're, you're drawing these things that they don't look computer generated. So let's say you wanted to bundle a whole bunch of hearts together. So I'm in the little pencil tool and I'm just gonna draw a heart just like that. And that's gonna be my vector. Now you can see the one side of it is a vector. And when I select the other side of it, it's also a vector. So I could actually move it a tiny bit if I wanted. I'm happy with the way that looks. And then I can just simply save that now. I can just go file, save as, and I can save it as an SVG file. So it's very easy to do. So I'm just gonna call it heart and I'll just call it zero 01. And then I'll just save it. I'll save it in my little digital downloads folder. And I'll just save it as that. Now what that means is that the next time I go in and I open it up, if I open up Inkscape, I go in here and there's a heart file and it actually says, in my on my computer it says HTML document, but it's basically a vector file. So I click on it and there it opens up. So now you can edit it. You can click on the link and you can see there's a couple points inside the vector. It's a very simple vector. So this would be one that you would want to use if you're, say, creating 30 hearts and you could create all sorts of different styles of them just using just the pencil. You'll see there's a smoothing option. When I click on the pencil, you'll see there's, a, there's different things up here at the top. There's different styles. So I'm just going to change the smoothing up to higher and I'm going to make like a really exaggerated heart here. 
and you could have that as well. Now, if you want to merge this into one SVG, you just simply hold down the shift key and select both sides of it, and then go up to path, and then you go to union, and that makes the whole thing now one vector file. So you can see now there's all the little vector nodes in there, and I can scroll in and see how crisp it is. It's not getting pixelated at all. So it's actually very easy to create simple shapes like hearts, circles, squares, check marks, arrows, uh, you know, all sorts of designs, but it's very easy to do. So once I've got this done, I'm just going to delete this one out. So now I'm going to select this and I'm going to go file, save as, and then this one will be heart 02. So now we've created two SVG files. Now, if we want to create different types of files, because of course we want to bundle them out, right? We want to create SVG. Then the next one I'm going to create would be a DXF. So I just go to File, Save As, and I've got a drop down list of all the different types of files that I can save this as. And you'll see one of them is called Desktop Cutting Plotter DXF. And I would just hit Save. And now it will save that file as a cutting file. So if you were, say, a woodworker or a metal worker and you wanted to create a heart burned into wood or burned into metal, this is how you would do it. You can also save this file as a PNG. And you save it as a PNG by going over to the right-hand side and you'll see there's a little export. You'll see there's an arrow coming in and an arrow going out. And we want the arrow going out. It says export this document or a selection as a PNG image. So I'm going to hit that button and that will give me this export piece and I can export the page, which I don't want to do because see how the page, see how the, my image is bigger than the page. I can export the drawing, which would be fine, or the selection. I'm just going to export the selection and then it will give me the width and the height and then I would make that the size that I want to make it. So I could make it really large if I wanted, really small. I can change the DPI settings to 300. That's typical, it's pretty high resolution. So I could then export that file as my heart, and I'm gonna click Export As. And that's going to give me my folder. And then I can have, I'm gonna write heart02 and that's going to save it as a PNG file. So I'll hit save and then export down at the bottom. And that's it. So now when I go into my folder, I'm just going to open up my folder here. You'll see that I've got my heart 02 is a DXF. My heart 02 is a PNG and my heart 02 is now an SVG file. I'm just going to make those bigger. I've got my first heart that I would need to do the same thing on, but now I've got these three now saved as well. So let's make an ESP file. That's the other type that we'd be doing. So I've got it selected here in Inkscape. I just go to File, Save As, and I would scroll on down and I see Encapsulated Postscript EPS file. That's it. I just hit Save. Now it saves it as an EPS file. It's going to ask me for a couple different defaults. I just leave all this uh, defaulted. It says embed fonts, rasterize filter effects, hit OK, and that's it. So now I've got my four set up for my heart number two. They're all there. You can't see this one just because my computer's acting up here, but it's a, ESP, or it's a PNG file. If I double click it, it'll actually open up in, in uh, Paint. I could just use that just as an example. And we can see here when I open up Paint, there's my beautiful PNG file. It's pretty high res too, right? Now when I, when I really, really go in, you'll see it's pixelated because that's a PNG. It won't do that if you use an SVG file. That's the difference. When you go really big, see how it gets pixelated? But most people like a PNG because they can use it on a t-shirt. So I could import this into Printful or I could upload it onto Redbubble or I could create a design with it and it would be totally fine.
So a really easy way to pull images and then sell them on Etsy is you go to a free website like rawpixel.com. Up at the top, you'll see there's a public domain little filter. I'll click that and I'll start to just scroll through and see if there's something that tickles my fancy here. So I can see here there's this Julie de Grag collection. And this is a compilation of human portraits, sketches, and graphic arts from the 19th century. So let's see if there's something in here that I would like to use. And maybe we can make a vector from it. Here's one. You'll see that there's a little rooster here. I'm going to click on that. And you'll see how pixelated it is, right? It's on some graphic paper. It's a nice little picture. But if I wanted to make it a vector, I would need to run this through Inkscape. So this is a free download. It's a public domain image. I'm going to click the free download button and it's going to just let me download the rooster. Easy. So now I'm going to get out of raw pixel and I'll open up Inkscape. So now I'm back in Inkscape. I'll open up my picture of my little rooster. It'll ask me import the DPI from the file, image rendering mode smooth, which is optimizing the quality. I'll click OK. All right, and I've got my rooster now imported into Inkscape. Now when I scroll in, see how pixelated it gets? That's not going to be great if I wanted to make a high-end print and I wanted to make it really high resolution. So what I'll do is I'll trace over this, and it's super easy to do. I'll just select the image. And then I'll just go up to Path and then Trace Bitmap. And when I do that, I get a little Trace Bitmap window that pops up. I'm going to click Update, which gives me a screenshot of what I'm dealing with here. And I have a few different options when I trace a bitmap. I can do Brightness Cutoff, Edge Detection, Color, Auto Trace, or Center Line Tracing. I just use Brightness Cutoff for these black and white images. And if I made it really, really heavy, then what'll happen is it'll just make the whole image really super dark. And if I make the image too light, if I were to bring it right down to say, you know, 12 and I update, it's gonna be a little bit grainy. So what you typically will do is just find a happy middle ground. I like to go around say 65, click update, and there it is. You'll see there's a couple dots on his chest here. If I make it a bit more, I click update. Those dots are now starting to disappear. I'm going to let a couple dots go through because I want to clean them up. I'll show you how to do that. And now I'm just going to click OK. And it'll just do a trace of the image. So now that's my original image here with the craft paper. I'm going to delete that just by clicking the delete key. And now this is my actual vector. And when I click on the second arrow down, it says edit paths by node. You'll see there's all the different vectors that make up the rooster. So this would be good now because it has infinite level of resolution. Now notice inside there's a couple of these little dots. It's really easy to clean them up. What you do is you go to the second little arrow which says edit paths by node and you'll see the paths are now highlighted. You just literally just use your mouse to make a little square. I'm just dragging my mouse to make a square. I've highlighted those now. I'll just click the delete key and they just disappear. So now it's cleaned up. Same thing say here, I don't want this. Let's say I don't want that little one there. I'll just click right over it. Like a, basically I'm just using my mouse to go over it and I'll click delete. That's it. How about this one over here? Get rid of that. So you can clean up a really crappy old photograph and you can make it look really nice and new because you're removing all the little dots. So it would take some time, right? You'd have to go around the foot, for example, but you can get pretty good at it pretty quickly. I'll just go through here and just remove these. Obviously, you'd spend some more time on this, but you could go through and you could clean them up. So it just works like that. Pretty easy to do. And then from there, you would then export this file. So I can click File, Save As, and now I'll call this one Rooster01, because I might have 30 rooster files, for example. That's my SVG file. I'll click Save. Then I can also save it as a DXF file. I can also save it as an EPS file. I can also 
export it as a PNG file. And then you bundle those together and you can list them on Etsy and sell them as a digital download. Another way that you can gather up images to bundle and sell on Etsy is to go to a free website like SVG SILH, which is the short form for silhouettes. And this is a free SVG image and icon site. All the contents are released under Creative Commons CC0, which means that they're public domain. So for example, if you really like angel wings, I'll just pop that open in a new tab. And we can see this angel wings item. It says right here, public domain. And you could download this as is. You could get all the angel wings and you could bundle them and you could sell them on Etsy. Now you may be wondering, why would somebody pay you $4 on Etsy when they can just come to this website for free? And it's a good question. And it's actually a question I had when I first started doing this. And the answer is one of two things. I Well, three things. First, they either don't know that these free websites exist. And so they're paying you $4 because they like Etsy, they trust Etsy, and they trust you. And they say, okay, I want to buy from you. And if there's a problem, you can help me deal with it. Number two, they may not have an interest in trying to track down all of these images on a free website because you might gather up 10 from this website and 10 from another public domain website. You might have a bundle of 600 ribbons, for example. And somebody says, look, I'm not spending the next three days hunting down 600 ribbons. I'll just pay you $3 and be done with it. So you're sort of hunting around the internet and making value for people because you're providing simple SVG files. The third reason somebody may want to pay you money is you'll notice this is an SVG file and it's also a PNG file. There is no EPS file and there is no DXF file and there's no JPEG for what it's worth. So this is an option. If somebody's really searching for a DXF file, they might not have the technical expertise to understand and how to use Inkscape. So that's an option. So I'm going to download this wing and I'm going to download it as an SVG file. It's just going to say, do you want to save it? I'll say save file as, and then it will ask me, save it as my digital download. So I'm going to put it in here and I'm just going to call it angel wings. Uh, and that'll be my, my scalable vector graphic. So I'm going to use this now in Inkscape. So I'll pop open Inkscape. And now I'll open up the file that I just grabbed from the free website. Okay, there it is. We can see that it's a scalable vector graphic because when I click the second little arrow down on the left-hand side, I can edit the paths by node. So I can hover over and I can see each individual little wing is its own little graphic. And I could actually edit those graphics if I wanted to. I could actually make it, you know, I could stretch it out and I could make it different if that's what I wanted to do. So you don't have to, but if you wanted to, it's very easy to do. And again, it's infinitely crisp. There's no pixelation when you zoom in, especially extreme zoom in. There's, there's just no pixelation. So that's it. So now I've got this image and now I can just save it as a PNG file or a DXF file. I can just go file, save as, and that gives me my options down here. I can save it as an EPS file or a DXF file. That's my other option. Or I can also export this as a PNG file and that's over on the right hand side, that little out arrow button. And that will now give me the dimensions for me to export this as a PNG. Very easy to grab and modify public domain images from the internet. So once you've got all of your designs created, you're going to want to bundle them together and that's the file you're going to upload onto Etsy to sell. So let's pretend, for example, that I really want to sell my heart design here and I'm just going to sell it singularly. I don't want to sell it all as a bundle. So I'm just going to have my heart DXF file, my heart ESP file, my heart PNG file and my heart SVG file. Those four I'm just going to list as one 
listing on Etsy. So all I'm going to do is create a new folder. I'm just right clicking inside of Windows Explorer. I'm going to right click, go to new, and then I'm going to go folder. That's going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it heart. So that's where I'm going to put my designs here. So heart number two DXF, you go in there. Heart EPS, you go in there. Heart PNG and heart SVG. So now inside of the heart folder, I've got my heart 02 design, which is this PNG picture. Now, you're not going to upload all four of these, although you could. Etsy gives you a maximum of five files you can upload. So how do you do like 120 files in one listing? Well, the answer is zip files. I could have four files in this folder. I could have 400 files in this folder. And I'll just go back a level. I'll right click on this folder and I'll click send to compressed folder. So what that means is whatever is inside this folder, it will essentially become one file I can upload. So I'm going to right click on the folder, send to compressed folder. This is the file that I upload onto Etsy. It's one file. It just happens to be a zip folder. So if you ever need to upload, let's say you have a listing of a hundred designs, put them all into one, two, three, four, or five zip folders, and that's what you upload onto Etsy. For creating the thumbnail, you can use any graphics design software. You could use, I just used Photoshop, you know, to create my thumbs. But here you can see there's a wood background. This one's got a mock-up. Uh, this one's got a brick wall design. The idea here is you want to specify somewhere the types of files that you're saving. So here you can see it's at the bottom of the thumb. Here you can see it's at the top. And you want some sort of consistency. And it all comes down to really personal preference. Like I happen to really like this style where it's just at the top because the little heart will sometimes cover. But again, it's total personal preference. So what I'm, I've done here is I've just typed in racing flag SVG. So if you want to see what thumbnails look like, just type in any sort of, you know, um, I'll say summer SVG. You know, you just type in a phrase and then whatever SVG is, and then you'll just see it'll come up with a bunch of, you know, different designs. So to create the thumbnail the very first time, one of the things you might find helpful is just I'm in PowerPoint right now and I'm just going to use an, a template. I just grabbed the image off of Etsy. I'm not in any way suggesting that you just rip off the image and you use that as your own, but I just picked a thumbnail that I liked and I'm just going to try to recreate it here really quickly in PowerPoint. So I'm just going to create a bar at the top and then inside the bar, I'll type in SVG EPS three spaces JPEG. Or I'm actually not going to sell a JPEG. So I'll do DVXF and then PNG. And then from there, I'll just change the font. I'll just make it a bit bigger. And then I can leave that at the top. I'll remove this now because I know what I'm doing here. And then I'll just import my image of my heart. And so that'll be my heart image that I'll put on here. So again, I mean, this is one design, right? So you may want to have a mock-up of a, it on a t-shirt, for example. Uh, you may want to have, you know, a couple pictures. I just like something simple like this. And then you could list this for like 99 cents. Or you could have a whole bundle of hearts, in which case, if that were the case, if you had like, say, 30 hearts, then you make them all, you know, you, you import them all, and then you just copy and paste them. So then heart number two is sitting here, and heart number 12 is sitting over here. These would all be different, by the way but you would have like all of your hearts listed here. And then you could have, you know, a big number 80 in the middle and say 80 hearts. And then somebody goes, wow, 80 hearts for $4. That's amazing. So it's kind of like the convenience store aspect of it. Like when you go to the convenience store and you buy a pop or a soda and it's like $2 and you go, man, I could go to the supermarket and get it for half that. Yeah, but the 7-Eleven's right there and they're convenient. It's the same thing with Etsy. You're going to get a lot of Cree-cut people and a lot of crafty people 
that aren't necessarily computer people. So they'd rather just pay you $4 and have all their problems go away rather than have them take hours and hours trying to recreate all these themselves. So that's really the value you can provide. If you can make 80 hearts or 100 arrows or 200 racing flags or a bunch of faces, silhouettes, the, the opportunities are endless. I would be totally doing you a disservice if I didn't mention about copyrighted and trademarked stuff on Etsy. You type in Princess SVG and 25,000 results come up, you're going to see a ton of trademarked and, and copyrighted items. I would strongly recommend that you avoid anything that has trademark or copyright implications. So for example, something like this birthday princess, that's a great looking thumbnail. It's a great looking design. Two different types of fonts, very easy. A Cree cut machine could cut this out of paper or cloth, no problem. But I would totally recommend avoiding anything that involves trademarked items. You're going to do all this work. You're going to be up for years. And then all of a sudden your shop's going to get shut down because of trademark infringement. You definitely don't want that. So if you've never been on Etsy before, the first thing I would encourage you to do is go in and search for any search term and then SVG is the search term. So you would type in something like Mother's Day and then SVG. And what will happen is you'll see a whole bunch of designs that pop up or you can scroll through and you can find different downloadable files. And then you can just basically take a look at something that you like. It's maybe this one here, mom bundles. And then you can see the way it's listed, how their tags are at the top, what they say here for digital download, learn more about this item. When I first started, I just copied this disclaimer and I just put it into a little word document. And then I just, you know, basically copied stuff that I liked. So I would just use that as an example. I'm not saying you have to take this one, but any of them, you would do that. Now to actually do a listing, you'll see over on the right, you'll see favorites, updates, and then here's your shop manager. So wherever your shop manager logo icon is, you want to click that. And then it'll give you an opportunity now to create a listing in Etsy. So you would just click the add listing button and you can start selling. So it's going to ask you to add a photo and that's typically going to be your thumbnail that you would have created either in PowerPoint or Paint or Photoshop or Canva. You would just create a thumbnail of your item and it would look similar to any one of these. So again, I don't want to drill down and say it must look exactly like this. But I like the wood on the background. I like the t-shirt. Sometimes it's just black or just white. That looks cool too. As you scroll on down, you're going to see an option. You'll see your listing details, who made it, that sort of thing. And then this is the piece right here. It says type a physical item or a digital item. And you want to make sure to select the digital item. Then you can just do a listing. You can put your tags, put your price down. I like to do stuff that's either like $2, $3, $4, that sort of thing. For your quantity, it's up to you, but I would typically put in like 999, that sort of thing. And then when it starts getting down into the 800s and 700s, you can just always top it back up. That's an option. There's really no reason to have like one listed. Um, now you will get charged a fee to relist it each time it, uh, you know, each time you sell something. So you got to keep that in mind. But hey, you're playing with house money at that point, right? And then here at the bottom, it says digital files. They can download these files. So this is where you would upload your file. So there's my heart compressed folder. And now it's uploading it. So when somebody pays me the $2, they'll be able to download that heart file. And that heart file will contain the SVG, the EPS, the DXF, and the PNG file. So that's it. So it's very easy to do. You can upload more files. If you're doing large groups of files, let's say I had 40 heart designs, I would probably upload five zip files and only one file, like one zip folder would contain all the SVG files. And then the second folder would contain all the DXF files. It just makes it more convenient for the client 
If you're dealing with hundreds of files, it's nice to have them somewhat organized. That can be really helpful as well. So I hope you found that helpful. Again, a very big picture overview here of how to do this. I do encourage you to you know, like and follow and subscribe on this channel, Crafty Stacks, because we're gonna be doing some more deep dives about creating digital files specifically on Inkscape. And I love Inkscape. There's so much you can do on it. So feel free to subscribe and, and join the ride as we uh, get more and more into the world of digital files. Thank you so, so much for watching.